All right, we're gonna gravity for just a minute. So when you're on the surface of the Earth, we call the force due to gravity your weight. And what was the formula for the weight of something near the surface of the Earth? Yeah, it's just equal to mg. We also had gravitational potential energy. And again, as long as you knew the surface of the Earth, what was the formula for gravitational potential energy? Great, mgy or mgh, sometimes put. Now, what if you're not near the surface of the Earth? The more general formula for the force due to gravity is that big, lovely equation here, m1, m2 over the distances of separation between the objects squared. So g is the gravitational constant, 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11. Not something you have to memorize. I just want to make sure you realize this is not like the 9.8 meters per second squared g. It's a capital G, the gravitational proportionality constant. So times the mass of each object divided again by their distance of separation squared. Now, if you look, <clears throat> how did I get from the force due to gravity near the surface of the Earth to the potential energy near the surface of the Earth? Well, I just multiplied it by the height. So, and in this case, that height was a, a relative term. I could say the lowest point in the motion or something like this. What well, the truth is, though, is that I'm really probably, multi you know, <clears throat> I could multiply it by how high it is from the center of the Earth, technically. So, but because we're looking at differences, we can kind of get away from that and just look at it, the lowest point of the motion or the ground or something along those lines. But technically it might be all the way down to the surface of the earth. So if we look here, let's say I still am on the surface of the earth here, but I want to use the universal formula for gravity. If I want to derive potential energy, I would again just take this force, just like we did here, and multiply by how high we are from the surface or from the center of the earth. And how far am I from the center of the earth right now? the radius of the Earth. And so in that case, that R, in my case, on the surface of the Earth, is the radius of the Earth. And if I multiply this all by the radius of the Earth, then I get a potential energy, which is just G M1 M2 over R. There's some directionality to this, and technically we want to make it negative. We'll visit that in a second here. So. Uh, actually, I'll leave it alone for now, but we'll come back and talk about why it's negative in a little bit. Um, but this is your actual technical definition for potential energy now. So this is only works when you're near the surface of the Earth, but if I have like, what's the potential energy of the moon in its nearest point to the Earth, or what's the potential energy of the moon when it's farthest point from the Earth, and things of this sort, this is where we'd have to go for potential energy. All right. So let's do some application here. Question number six. <clears throat> what is the minimum initial velocity of an object, or that an object must have, when fired from the surface of the Earth to escape the Earth's gravity? Answer this in terms of the ME and RE, the mass and radius of the Earth, and G, the gravitational constant. So again, what is the minimum initial velocity an object must have when fired from the surface of the Earth to escape the Earth's gravity? This is often termed the escape velocity of an object. So if I fire it from the surface of the Earth, it's got to have a certain minimum velocity if it's actually going to escape the atmosphere and leave Earth, so to speak. Otherwise, it's just going to come right back down. Cool. If you look here, um, when we did uh, traditional, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, motion in like one dimension and we fired a rocket straight up and it came right back down. So kind of one dimensional projectile motion. So when we fired it up, so right as it's leaving the ground, what's the only kind of energy it had? As it's leaving the ground? Kinetic. And then when it reaches its highest point, it's all potential. And then it goes back down and right as it hits the earth, it's back to being all kinetic again. And so in this case, though, if we assume no air resistance and things of that sort, so no non-conservative forces, we'd say that mechanical energy is conserved. Essentially, what we'd be saying is that, you know, kinetic energy plus potential energy initial equals kinetic energy plus potential energy final. And it just so happened that when I'm firing this rocket from the ground, initially it's all kinetic energy, no potential. So, and then later on, it's all uh, potential energy, no kinetic. So we're going to look at this similarly in this case. So let's say we fire this thing from the ground, certain ground level. And so initially, 
what's the, what kind of energy does it have? So, yeah, we're going to say it has kinetic, but are we at the center of the Earth, necessarily? No, so it actually does have potential. We can't say in this sense that it has no potential energy. And notice I got to go here rather than here because am I always going to be near the surface of the Earth in this problem as it's trying to escape the Earth's atmosphere? No. And so in this case, I can't say that its potential energy is zero because we're not, I'm sorry, I can't say the potential energy is zero yet because I'm not at the center of the Earth. And so it's got an initial kinetic energy. It's got an initial potential energy. So, but if it just barely has the escape velocity, then once it escapes the Earth's atmosphere, how fast do you suppose it's probably going? Well, if it's the bare minimum escape velocity to exit the atmosphere, what we're going to assume is that once it leaves the Earth's atmosphere, it barely had enough to get there, and it has no more velocity at that point, which means it has no kinetic energy at that point. Cool? We're also going to assume, so notice, look at the formula for potential energy. So if you're escaping the Earth's atmosphere, you're getting very, very, very far away from the Earth. And if you get very, very far away from the Earth, what happens to your potential energy? It goes really small. And in this case, I mean, technically, you've got to get infinitely far away to have zero potential energy, but we're going to say it approaches zero in this case as well. And so this is the equation we're dealing with. So here we've got kinetic energy, one-half mv squared, plus potential energy. And we can't use mgy again. We've got to use g m1, m2. You know, I'm going to make this gm1. I'm going to make the mass of the object, same m that's over here. And this is now the mass of the Earth, r over r squared. In this case, what r were we at? The radius of the Earth. So, oh, and this should be a minus, right? Cool. And there's your initial kinetic. There's your initial potential. And this adds up to what? Zero on the other side of the equation. And so if I want to find out what that escape velocity actually is, we'll just do some rearranging here. What's going to cancel out of this equation? Yeah. The rocket's mass does not matter. I'll bring the two up. And there's the minimum escape velocity needed to leave the Earth. We said the approximations we made here that these are zero is we said that it's just barely enough velocity to get out, and once it gets out, it won't have, you know, because if I fire it from the Earth, what's going to be happening to its velocity as it shoots upward? So again, I got no engine on this thing. I'm giving it its entire launch velocity. I'm getting, it, like I say, a giant slingshot, and it's slinging this thing up into space. It's going to be going down the whole time. And we're saying that right as it gets out of the Earth's atmosphere, it has no velocity left. So that's why the final kinetic energy is zero. So notice, if I, if I shot it off a little faster, then maybe once it got outside the Earth, it might still have velocity left. But if I want the bare minimum escape velocity, then I'm going to assume that it's gotten zero velocity once it finally leaves. And that would get you the bare minimum. So that's why that's our approximation there is zero. So, and then potential energy once it leaves infinitely far away, defined by infinity, you get zero potential energy as well. All right, so again, what is the speed of a satellite in a stable circular orbit about the Earth at an altitude h above the surface of the Earth? Answer in terms of the mass of the Earth, the radius of the Earth, gravitational constant g, and h, the altitude in this case. All right, so we're in a stable circular or orbit here. And in this case, that means we're moving at constant velocity. Going around the Earth, our orbit distance is not changing whatsoever. So let's draw a free body diagram. What forces are acting on our satellite? It's out in space, right? That's out in space now. Ooh, we can't say no gravity. Yeah, notice it's not infinitely far away. So there is gravity. And in this case, 
The only reason it stays in this orbit is because of gravity. So, but can I say that it's gra force due to gravity is mg? No, because I'm not near the surface of the Earth, so I've got to use the more universal expression for gravity in this case. And that points towards the center of the Earth, and I'm just going to call it fg here, but no, that's g m over r squared. Um, any other forces acting on this thing? No, that's it. So we got the sum of the forces. And notice this is uniform circular motion. Some of the forces in the radial direction towards the center of my circle adds up to what? Or not mg, but m centripetal acceleration, which is the mv squared over r. And in this case, the only force we have is the force due to gravity. And so here, that force due to gravity is equal to mv squared over r. And notice my force due to gravity and my centripetal both point towards the center of the circle, so they have the same sign. And so we're going to have gm m, which is mass of the Earth for the second one, over what's my r? What's my distance? What is the, ra what is the radial orbit in this case? Good, yeah, radius of the Earth plus h. Cool, and this is equal to mv squared over r. Notice the mass of the satellite, yet again, does not matter. <clears throat> and we were just asked for the speed, and so we're going to solve for v here. Oh, what's, what's this r right here as well, by the way? That's also radius of the Earth plus h. And if I look, this actually cancels out one of these. So we're left with v squared equals g times mass of the Earth all over the radius of the Earth plus h. And we'll take the square root. Awesome.